Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel, Patricia Mona Intuitive Consulting. Today I have two amazing guests that I'd love to introduce you to, Lindsay and Nick Motichka. I have had the pleasure of um, experiencing the 9D transformational breath work that you two have gotten yourselves into and oh my God, mind blowing. But I'll talk about my experience and what I saw during that class. I'll talk about it later. Thank you so much for joining me here today. Great, thank, thank you very much for having us. We uh, are very grateful for you and your space and your energy and everything about you. Thank you, thank you. And yeah, you guys were able to come and, and do the amazing breathwork class in my space, which I love that we're, you know, you're not, we're not super close, not in the same city, but we're close enough to be able to collaborate and, and do that together. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about cool. it. So yeah, how we got into 9D breathwork. So it's a bit of a story and uh, Linz will start that off for yeah. us. So yeah, in 2017, um, we were living in Calgary, Okotoks area. Nick was with the Calgary police and no offense to Nick, but at that time he was emotionally unavailable, um, coping with alcohol and just numbing out. And at that time I had a miscarriage and Nick was not overly supportive and available. So I seeked out a shaman energy healers to kind of help me through that really challenging time and and then fast forward to 2020 Nick was diagnosed with severe PTSD and our world crumbled and I honestly thought I was going to lose my husband and then so then in that moment I really sunk into my healing my meditation all the things to just stay grounded and centered and be able to support excuse me support him through you know that really challenging time so yeah, that's kind of what I, drives us and, you know, the passion to serve and help people with this breath work is that's kind of where it comes from is just our own struggles. So, yeah. And from my perspective, I very much agree with uh, everything Lynn said and particularly with the piece about me being emotionally unavailable. And that was partly from my upbringing and then also from just the way I coped with the the hard things that I experienced and saw as a police officer. And that was just to push things back down and not let anything, you know, experience anything emotionally or, um, or really let it come into my existence. And so that was how I dealt with life up until 2020 when I was uh, forced to, to look at, at all that stuff that I was previously pushing down. And what that looked like for me was, was a breakthrough at work. And it certainly didn't look like a breakthrough in the moment. It uh, was very much a breakdown, but with the benefit of hindsight, it was one of the best things that ever happened to me because it forced me to actually deal with all of that stuff that I was cramming down. And so in that, in that moment in 2020, I, I knew that what I was doing wasn't cutting it anymore, and I knew I had to find another way to, to keep going. And so I was doing all the traditional therapies that the Calgary Police and WCB was setting me up with. And after a year and a half of those, I was at a actually a real low point in my mental health journey. And it was around that time, a little bit before that, actually, Lynn's had told me that what I needed was was a shaman and I didn't at the in that moment didn't know what that looked like and so I kind of ignored her like I do sometimes unfortunately <laughs> uh so a few months had passed and I was at this really low point and I just was what I was doing wasn't working and so um I just decided that I needed a, a shaman and convinced myself that I'd come up with this great idea. <laughs> when in fact, it wasn't my idea at all, but the seeds. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I found a shaman who was willing to have a, a healing session with me. And I had a real knowing that plant medicines were going to be a thing for me and specifically psilocybin. And what appealed to me about that was just the fact that it's nature. There's no pharmaceutical company involved or any sort of western medicine at all it's just pure nature and so 
in early January of 2022. So actually, sorry, not early January. It was January 28th of 2022, which happened to be our 10 year wedding anniversary, which no coincidence for sure. And then also remembering what was going on at that time. So that was when the Freedom Convoy was on their way across our beautiful country to Ottawa to protest all of the the mandates and just the the things that we'd been put through by our governments and so that for the first time was really bringing us hope um, that things were were coming to the surface and that we weren't alone because for the previous couple of years going through this healing journey and trying to figure out our lives we were, felt really isolated, as I'm sure we all did, um, and just thinking that we were the only ones that were questioning what was going on in the world. And then that convoy happened, and it was like, oh, man, it felt so good to know that we weren't the only ones. And so that was the energy of, of that time period for us. And so we traveled back to Calgary to have this healing journey, and it was just a beautiful ceremony that brought in all the energetic component to the healing that I was missing from traditional therapies. And I will say, just to preface all of this, is that I'm not bashing talk therapies or traditional therapies in any way. It can be super helpful for people. I'm just, for me personally, what I needed was, was something more. And that's what I found in this healing journey. And so um, I had actually grown the medicine that I ended up consuming that day. And I'd grown it on a sacred geometry clearing plate and done Reiki on it and all the things and consumed it with this really strong intention to actually go back and process this stuff that was affecting me. And so with the altered state of consciousness that psilocybin allowed, I was able to go back to those hard calls, going right back to my early days in the RCMP, going back at this point, you know, over 15 years and was able to process these things that I had seen and experienced in this uh, like a beautiful way. I know that sounds crazy to say, but it was just an amazing experience to have different perspective on them, on the situation and this compassion for the people involved in the various situations and also for myself. And with that, I was able to finally process this stuff that was affecting me and causing me to show up as, you know, emotionally unavailable and all the things. And so prior to my journey, I'd been tested by that psychologist and was PTSD diagnosis and on the severe side, and then had my healing journey. And then six weeks later, I was tested by a, an independent psychologist and I no longer met the criteria for a diagnosis. Amazing. which was yeah amazing and I was feeling really good the the negative of course was that my benefits stopped that day and the Calgary police were expecting me to basically report back to do it for duty and that I just really come out of alignment with policing um for well two big reasons number one was my own mental health and so I was doing quite well and if I were to go back into those situations I felt like I would just re-traumatize myself and also just morally and ethically I just really didn't feel good about what had happened um, in Ottawa specifically with the Emergencies Act and and different things that I saw even in Calgary with the injunction against peaceful protesters and I just am not willing to participate in enforcing something that I don't believe in and so with the amazing support of Lynn's and her family we made that decision to resign from policing. I have a question for you and I'm sure Everybody watching this probably is asking the same thing because you were a police officer. You did both RCMP and CPS. Okay, so now that Trudeau had has been found out that he was dead wrong about this, it was unconstitutional, unnecessary. Um, he just didn't want to talk to the protesters. Like yeah. it could have been solved in so many other different ways, right? What's mm -hmm. going to happen now? Does he literally get away with this? Does he have? Because someone said to me that he has something like political immunity? How is that possible? Does it like, is he gonna get away with this? Yeah, those are all really good questions. And, and I don't specifically know the answer to. I have heard of that that immunity piece that you've you touched on. And I don't know like to what level that extends to or, or what that looks like. Um, I'm just, I honestly, I'm just really happy that these that decision came out and that this information is coming out. And people are just 
going to become more and more aware of of all the the craziness that happened during that time and it was like it was terrible right like those few years have been really hard but there's a lot of positives that have come out of it yes. and a big one for me is it's brought people like yourself and us together and it's really connected sort of the the dream team of people that you'd want in your life yes. and so I'm just really encouraged by by all of it because it's all all of the corruption and everything is all really coming to the surface and that's what is necessary in order for things to change so yeah I don't know what the details are going to be or what repercussions there may or may not be uh but there is I'm, I'm just ex I'm excited for for the future and something different to come out of this so well I think happening for us I think it's going to be a karma year 2020 from what I'm what I was shown it's an action year it's a year to go 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 don't mm -hmm. slow down get moving for the people who are ready to take a leap of faith this is the year where you leap and it'll be huge the second thing was I kept hearing it's a karma year and a couple of years ago um I got this random hit that Trudeau would be out of office by June of 2024 so June, July, 2024. So we'll see, we'll see. I'm crossing my fingers. I'm praying, nice. you know, nice. like there's gotta be yeah. some way to get this guy out. Like no one wants him. Nobody wants him. Like even yeah. the diehard liberals are turning against him. So I just, yeah. I, I, I hope that this is the year that karma comes, rises mm -hmm. to the surface and what he's done, he is held accountable for because there's a lot of people's lives that they lost their livelihoods, not just their vehicles, but their bank accounts and their mortgages and their families. And it was just one big nasty ripple effect. So mm -hmm. I personally have the most utmost respect for you and and leaving uh, policing at that time because I, I couldn't stand for something like that either when I know that the government's clearly breaking the law and you're supposed to be the one who's doing their biting and doing it for them. Like yeah. I can imagine being in a police officer's shoes at that time. That must have been really hard. Yeah. And that was something that yeah really came to the forefront for me was that exact thing was how all of a sudden I realized that, yeah, I'm, I am the government's hired goon is yes. what my role is, but I always believed in what the government was, you know, laws kind of made sense to me for the most part. Like, okay, you can't go around punching people in the face. Like, okay, yeah. that makes sense. I can enforce that law. Whereas yeah. for the first time in, in this past few years, it's been like, okay, this doesn't make sense. Like, what are we doing here? Mm -hmm. And so that was really a process for me to realize it's like, wow, this is not what I signed up for at all. And so it's part of actually, iron not ironically at all, about a week after my healing journey, I was feeling really good. And I ended up recording a video um, that was a letter that I'd written to fellow police officers. And it was just asking them to really think about what they were doing. And this was right, it was actually before the Emergencies Act was, was enacted. And um, this video, I, I ended up writing this thing in my journal and then recording it and then posting it to this private group I was a part of. And then it got shared outside of that and kind of took on a life of its own. And um, it is just crazy to look at the timeline now of how I was feeling empowered and to speak my truth, you know, days, a week after my healing journey. And so it's it's not a coincidence at all that the timing of everything. And so, yeah, just to bring it back. So um, in April of 2022, as I resigned from policing and um, we we've started a, an apparel brand and then just figuring out where we wanted to be in terms of where we were going to live and just focusing on our own healing. And then uh, fast forward just to this past summer, we found 9D Breathwork and it was an amazing it's just an amazing thing. And I'll let Lynn's talk about her experience with it. And then we'll go from there. Yeah. So I experienced it first. A friend of mine had mentioned it, you know, you got to go check this out. And they had actually hosted an outdoor 9D breath work around a fire. Ooh, yeah. It was, super, it was super cool. And that was the abundance one. And I was just blown away by it and came home and told Nick and my mom had just happened to have a ticket two days later for another event, but she got sick. So she get gifted it to Nick. And then, yeah, he came home blown away. I'm like, why don't, why don't we do this? Like we could do this. And it was kind of just super spontaneous and we didn't even really 
think about it, we just, we just jumped right in. Yeah. And it was really for, for me, just stepping into my role as a, as a healer and realizing that all the things that we'd went through and um, all those experiences really set us up in order to help other people. And so really seeing the the beauty in our struggles and how much power and medicine can come from, you know, adverse experiences. And so this modality, so nine deep breath work, the, the things that you're able to experience and feel in your body and move through and um, heal is, it's amazing. And so I've had some psychedelic experiences, obviously, and breath work and this 90 breath work in particular is it really some of the sensations and feelings and whatnot in your body are actually there's a lot of parallels between psychedelics and breath work. And it's just oh. wild to realize that we can get to those places with just our breath alone. And and it's it's just such a powerful force. And so we're just really excited to be able to bring this to the maximum number of people in order to benefit them on their own healing journeys. And uh, it's just been a, a really exciting time and just the energy of the rooms and the, the shifts that we're able to feel. It's just, it's been really incredible. So how... So how do you describe the process of 9D breathwork? Because it's not just breathwork. It is so much more. How do you yeah. do that? So it's, it's a very, it's an immersive somatic breathwork experience. So yeah. what, what that means is, so you're wearing a headset, number one, um, and an eye mask. Yeah. So it's a really, it's really immersive in that sense. So you, you do participate in it in a room full of other people. Uh, but once the track starts, it's you're in your own, yeah. you're in your own world going through your own stuff and you quickly forget that there's anyone else around. And so our role then as the facilitators is to be people's empathetic witness to their what they're moving through and the the different things that are happening for them um, in this journey. And so the the name 9D comes from the fact that there's nine dimensions to the sound that people are hearing in their in their headphones. And some of those dimensions are it's tuned to 432 hertz, which is really healing for the human body. It has binaural beats, there's sophagial frequencies, there's neurolinguistic programming, um, hypnotic suggestion. There's a lot going on. And then to combine that with somatic breath work, which is a technique that it kind of varies depending on the on the journey itself but it's a it's a breath technique that's all in and out through your mouth so there's some that are are a diaphragmatic breathing so it's into the belly and then out through the mouth and then there's another technique where it's sort of a into the belly into the chest and then out and when you do that you you're bringing in a lot more oxygen, of course, than what you normally do. And you're off gassing um, a ton of CO2. And when you do that, there's biological responses in your body and different parts of your brain are turned down and your body is turned up and you're able to access your subconscious. And it's just a really unique experience that an another parallel between breathwork and psychedelics is the fact that words and language just don't you can't adequately describe what you go through unless yeah. you've experienced it firsthand okay so i have to say because we just um did the class january 27th in my studio for the very first time and i have to say mind completely blown and um you guys have no idea how many emails i got the next day going oh my god patricia that was mind-blowing amazing like it, it's it was hard to put like you said hard to put into words but i kept getting all these emails and even last night i was out with one of the ladies that had come to the class and and she's like when can we do it again get them in patricia get them in get them in <laughs> monthly get them in so i'm getting you guys in um but for me as a psychic medium, I do have the ability to be able to see auric fields and energy. And I know a lot of people lately have been walking around very gray, very 
know, you can even see it in their faces. You don't even need to ha have the ability to see auras right away in colors. Look at people's skin. You can see that they're drained of energy. They're a void of color and freshness. You know what I mean? Because that freshness, oh, I just saw an orb going across. I saw that. <laughs> Not to press a blind <laughs> after. Um, but when people, um, you know, are carrying a heaviness to them, they often look very gray and dark mm -hmm. and dense. And um, what I saw that night was, and it's desensitization when you're putting on the mask and, and the headphones, kind of like in one of those float pods. It's all about desensitization, right? Because it, it actually will take you into those higher dimensions. And um, so what I saw was the heaviness on people when they began. And within, I would say the first minute, I started to watch the colors shift. Mm -hmm. start to move in a different direction and then when the music picked up I could see their auric fields going like this to the to the music so I knew that there was there had to have been some form of binaural beats or something in there because it was affecting their auric field right mm -hmm. and as it was bouncing it was like the colors were getting brighter and the darkness was being going like this it was coming off of them and I mean, I witnessed people crying, I witnessed people shouting, I witnessed people. It was such a somatic release for them mm -hmm. that instant shifts I watched. And by the end of the whole, by the end of the class, people had the most beautiful, peaceful colors all around them. It was literally like they went through a spiritual car wash and came out shiny and clean mm -hmm. and i've never i've never come across anything like that like i've gone to drumming circles i've done i've only done a couple breathwork classes before right i mean i do singing bowl meditations and i think i'm pretty good at it right i go around i shift people's energy but mm -hmm. singing bowls don't shift people's energy it's me going around and actually you know shifting their energy and getting them bringing in their glow again right well what i watched was them the program doing that and then both of you and the three of us were able to walk around and do energetic clearings and help them shift even more so by the end of it as you know because you witnessed it and that's a beautiful thing i think you guys are the witnesses of the most amazing transformation i think i've ever been a part of um by the end of it minds were blown this is a mind-blowing class this isn't something that's little and even i had a couple of people say to me i wish i would have known what i was getting myself into <laughs> and the other lady goes yeah but how would we have been prepared how do you prepare for that you know um because you're releasing childhood traumas you're releasing you know the heaviness of all the stuff you didn't even know was in there but it's also happening what i witnessed was it was happening in layers right because there were parts of the program where i could see lower stuff coming up from almost like the bottom of their bodies and then coming up and being released and then another layer was getting released and if i if i would have sat and stared at at someone I would have been able to read exactly even what they were releasing because there were stories behind it mm -hmm. it was ingrained in their psyche you know so it's it definitely shifts belief patterns because belief patterns mm -hmm. is part of the grid that is embedded in people's colors if that makes sense yeah. so mm -hmm. you definitely changed minds and and shifted belief systems because I watched it happen and so um, I, I, I love that you guys are agreeing to come once a month because I think that everybody should do this class, regardless of how healed you think you are or you think you aren't. This is, it's mind blowing stuff that instantly transforms energy and anyone who can see auras can literally sit and watch it for themselves and, and see what a shift this 90 transformational breathwork stuff does.
Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't, I couldn't agree more with you on that. How, <laughs> how transformational it can be. And it's just what I love about it is that it's very approachable for people. You don't have to be, you know, a real advanced on your journey or have any, you know, mm-hmm. crazy spiritual experiences or beliefs. Yeah. Literally all you have to do is show up and breathe and yes. that's it. And the, the track and then us being able to do the energy work is like magic for sure. So it's um that's what I love about it. And the fact that it's, it's just your breath, like you, you can control and you can affect and heal and all those things with just your breath alone. And then people even during the journey, they're in the driver's seat the whole time. They're able to modulate their experience with the depth of their breath. And so if you, the deeper you go and the harder you, you know, concentrate on getting that air into your belly and breathing really deep, the the deeper that experience is going to be for them. And if they're not willing to, you know, want to have a a big profound experience, they can dial back their breath and yeah, just kind of dial it into what they're ready for in that particular session. And we definitely do find there's like people you've just talked about that say, I wish I would have known what I was getting into. Uh, But yeah, again, you can't adequately prepare someone at all. But subsequent journeys, when we watch them come back, it's really cool to watch them, you know, maybe dip their toes a little bit the first time or two, and then to see that progression. And then by, you know, third, sometimes beyond journeys, they're just going for it and having these big releases and magical results at the end. So it's been really a neat thing to witness for sure. Now there's, there's way more than just one. This isn't just a one and done class either, because there's how many different programs? I believe there's 12 full length journeys (laughs) right now. And so they range from, you know, an abundance focused one to the one we did was called the awakening. There's letting go and moving on. There's a full system reset. There's generational trauma. Yeah. Um, healing ancestral lines. There's, um, there's yeah, a bunch of various themes and they're, they're similar in a lot of ways. Um, the sounds and whatnot, but very unique at the same time. And then even for ourselves where we've been able to go and we've done all of them and then now working through them for, you know, the second and beyond time. And you're able to get different things out of it. Even if you've already done that journey, there's, you know, you're in a different headspace the next time you do it and you're able to have different insights and move through different things, even subsequent times. And it's, um, yeah, just a very, very unique situation where you come into a room with a group of other people and put on this eye mask and headset and then you come out feeling a lot lighter absolutely and then I can't help but real or have the realization too that there's a big part of I think our energy too um and then it at your space I mean the energy in there is incredible and yours your energy is amazing Mm -hmm. and so I think that that's a part of it too is that we're able to come in and kind of tell our story and give people some be able to relax them a little bit and bring out some vulnerability in them because we do share our story and our vulnerability at the beginning of the session and then just gives people that invitation to step into that for themselves yeah I love it it's it, it was such a perfect perfect evening perfect Saturday night out and um so for anyone who is looking for an awesome amazing saturday night out come join us you know i'll i'll post in my newsletter and online and stuff when we pick our dates but mind-blowing stuff you guys i'm so 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 glad that it, Lindsay, it was you that found it was it you that initially found it i was the first one to experience it and now Oh, our whole, my whole family is doing it. My parents are doing it. It's so amazing. We, they, we even have kids tracks, our three little boys, they're okay. doing breath work. So yeah, it's been huge. Just seeing, you know, like my dad, for instance, it's changed him a lot. And yeah, so seeing it firsthand, it's, it's really cool. And I'm so grateful that, yeah, we came across this. So Yeah, that's awesome. I just, I had to have you guys on my YouTube channel to talk about it because um, there, there are other people that do the 9D 
Mm -hmm. word, right? So is it, is it, where did it start? Is it in Canada only? Is it in the US? Where can people try it? Yeah, so it it's worldwide at this point. There's, there's, I believe there's around 500 practitioners worldwide, but that number is growing nice. every day, basically. Yeah. So where it started was, it started in the States. Um, and so Brian Kelly is the individual's name who uh, came up with it. And so he had a breathwork practice prior to COVID. And then COVID happened and shut down his mm -hmm. breathwork experiences. And so he had the idea to go online and offer this somatic breath work online. And so he found a sound engineer and they together came up with this 9D amazingness. Mm -hmm. And so the idea at first was to put it out and just be able to, for him to, you know, facilitate breathwork sessions online. And then quickly he realized how many people he can help if he were to put this out to other people and have them facilitate it. And so it's only been um, out and being offered to, you know, additional practitioners for not even a year, actually. It's so it's very, very new and exactly. it's growing all the time. Yeah. Wow, yeah. Just since the spring of 2023. So there's, they're adding new tracks all the time and, and refining the, the existing ones. And it's there, the whole ethos behind the company is to just help the maximum number of people and get this out to the masses and in that way help the collective consciousness and assist the ascension of our consciousness which is just a really cool thing to be a part of and just I just love the that as the driving force behind it and it's not like a competition model it's like how can we get this out to the most amount of people and then another thing that's really cool is being able to weave in different our different skills right as as healers into the breathwork session so we're both taking shamanic energy healing from an algonquin medicine man and so we're able to do energy healing during the breathwork session so we're combining all of the nine dimensions with the energy work shamanic energy work and then with the, the energy work that you were doing it's it's just really cool to be able to weave all that in together to just give people the maximum benefit possible it's next level it's for sure next next level and um even even you know with the room set up and the um frequencies on the wall and it just it all jives you guys doing it here it just does and i loved every minute of it i loved it mm -hmm. um uh the other thing that i wanted to mention let's do a little shameless plug here your shirts, yeah. your shirts, you make the most gorgeous, soft t-shirts, comfortable t-shirts. Let's talk about that because that's another thing that was COVID de derived, wasn't it? You started that after or during that time? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. The So the idea came in early 2020. And so it was really happening in the background during my whole healing journey that I discussed earlier. And so what that was for me was I was searching for a locally made natural fiber, just good fitting quality, basic t-shirt. And I couldn't find it. I couldn't find a company that was doing all of those things. And so I decided to just make it myself. And so um, that was all happening in the background very slowly. And so been able to work with the manufacturer in Calgary. So the shirts are sewn in Calgary and they're made with hemp and organic cotton. And it's just been a really, really interesting experience to get something from my brain into physical form. And then I've added in some healing elements to the clothing. So hemp itself is, is a high vibrational product and uh, organic cotton is, is high er vibration. It's around a hundred on the, I believe it's, I don't know the exact scale, but um, anyways, it's, significantly better than synthetic fibers in terms of its frequency and just the way it feels and the way it you know it makes you feel when you put it on it's just better synthetic clothing is we've really been sold a lie with it and if it's touching your skin nature's best for sure and so um yeah i've been able to 
add even uh, clear quartz crystals into the Karen contents label. So I've sent those crystals various really high vibrational energies and then had that sewn in. So even while you're wearing, you know, high vibrational clothing that looks good, you're also getting the the benefit of, of this basically infused crystal as well and so yeah so far i've started with men's t-shirts but i'm actively working on a woman's specific t-shirt with my pattern maker and my local calgary based sewer so that's something that um to look for in the future and then other products too i'm looking for ways to incorporate uh, emf protection into clothing uh hats specifically to start with and uh yeah i, I definitely yeah, right I don't take credit for for that idea. That <laughs> idea definitely came from you. So I'll give credit where credit's <laughs> due. <laughs> but yeah. And I'm telling you, we're getting fried. We're getting fried from the inside out. All of our electronics, you know, even today, I was sitting here playing with my my little EMF detector. What I was gonna take it with me. I might have already thrown it in my purse. Um, anyways, playing with my little EMF detector and going up this close. I'm this far from my from my computer and it was going off red in the red so it's like man we're really with all of these devices we are frying ourselves and i know like i'm very very sensitive to energy and um when when i came across Faraday clothing the blanket it it literally it changes your vibration because you can actually feel what nature feels like because everything goes quiet there's nothing that can get through right so yeah i i can't wait for you to come out with pajamas or a house coat because that's the first thing i put on when i get home is my pajamas and my house coat so i'd love to wear an emf blanket as a house coat my god that that would be a dream and because we got to start thinking how are we going to protect ourselves and you know and there's people out there that actually sleep with their routers in their bedrooms and yeah. you know if if you are one of those people that puts your routers in your bedrooms try putting a plant right next to your router and see what happens it will kill it within days nothing grows around routers so why aren't we taking the hint right if it kills a plant it's, it's not doing good out for us so it just might take a little longer before it kicks in our way but um i think that uh i think that that's going to be a huge hit and i love where you're going with your clothing line it's very conscientious there is so much thought love care heart and soul put into it um i believe in you i believe in what you're offering all of it all of it you guys are so on the right track it's just i'm i'm one of your cheerleaders i i love i love watching the development and watching you guys go it's beautiful it is so i'm grateful to have you in my space and and to offer your gifts to my clients you know because like i said that night was mind-blowing it was all i could think about the next day <laughs> so thank you yeah, so much. Oh, thank we're you thank super, you super super grateful to have you in in our lives and mm -hmm. yeah and it's just a real gift to to be able to do this with lynn's and be able to offer this the healing and everything mm -hmm. and just the the dynamics and the energy of of us doing it together is just next level for sure so yeah just really grateful for it all absolutely yeah, you guys make a perfect, perfect team. I got to say, and and my husband and I, we're almost 30 years together. And it's so beautiful to see couples that are in love and, and just want to go and change the world together. And they're on the same team. And yeah, it I love it. I love it because I have that with Frenzo. So it's a beautiful, beautiful thing to see and, and rare nowadays. It's, mm -hmm. you know, you're way stronger together, especially when you know each other. So Lindsay, <laughs> you did a good job staying by your man through the craziness of the RCMP and CPS. You did both. You did both. I can yeah, only imagine. Yeah, I read for a lot of them and and I it's yeah, it's it's mm -hmm. messed up um what they what you guys have to go through. It really is. So I thank God that you found your healing journey. But yeah. all necessary because it got you where you are today, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's, it's just really neat to be on this side and have that awareness that it all happened, not for, you know, no reason, like it, it absolutely had to happen to get us to this place and to get us on the right track and on the, the path to 
our highest selves and being able to give back to people and each other. And it's just, again, a gift to be growing together too. Cause I think that's, that's fairly rare as well as a lot of people, maybe one of the, the, per, the people in the relationship are, you know, on a growth mm -hmm. sort of path and maybe the other one isn't. And so, yeah, just super grateful to, uh, have this lovely lady in my life for sure and for her to put up with all my bs <laughs> before my healing began because yeah it was something that i grew up in a home where my dad was a police officer so i didn't have it's all i've ever known and so i didn't really have any awareness or compassion for what she went through through it and uh yeah it's just amazing to to be still together and be growing together and um yeah it's just a real gift for sure Love it. so how can people find you how can people find your amazing clothing and how can people find your 9d um dates because you don't just do it here you do it where else do you do it so yeah, we we live in Sylvan Lake, Alberta. So we do sessions in Red Deer, Central Alberta area, and then um, moving forward, we'll be coming back to Calgary um, regularly. And so yeah, you can find us um, through probably our Instagram is mm -hmm. the best way. And so it's um, collective, collective underscore rising underscore on and, Instagram. Yeah, and then through there you can follow the link in the bio there to our upcoming events. And then uh, for the clothing, it's called Flow State Designs. And the website is flowstatedesigns.ca. And if you search uh, either of our names too uh, on Instagram, you can yeah, follow the Flow State um, Instagram page and our Collective Rising Instagram page as well. Perfect. Well, and I'll share that information in the description as well. Wow. Well, is there anything else that we can think of? to cover that we didn't cover? I don't think so. Feels pretty complete. Yeah, yeah. just again, just super grateful for, for you and what you're doing for the collective and that mm -hmm. you've invited us into your amazing circle. So thank you. Oh no, and thank you, thank you, thank you for bringing it. Because yeah, it's like, welcome home. <laughs> My space was waiting for you because that was next level. And, 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 and I love being such or being a part of such a quick transformational evening, like what I was, it was, yeah, it's still mind blowing. Like I, I still think about it all the time and I can't wait for you guys to come back. I can't wait till I'm on the floor trying it. I really want to do it myself, but to watch and be a part of the healing, you know, that was taking place in the room. Wow. Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thank you. And thank you to everybody out in YouTube land for listening to this chat. Um, I will, like I said, put your guys's um, information in the description. And um, yeah, I will see you guys at the next. We got to pick our dates. We're discussing that out as soon as we get done this. <laughs> so God bless you guys. We'll see you at the next one. Take care. Thank you. Thank you.